everyone should strive to have a good kingdom more kingdoms means more good fights more fights means more entertainment more fun for everyone so i think it's in everyone's best interest to have good kingdoms all around and in my opinion and experience you need three components and they're all equally important because without the one you can have the other two and it would make sense so the first one i'm gonna go from top to down is leadership I talk about how leadership needs to be calm, it needs to be collected, it needs to be in touch with the community it's trying to build. And one of the ways to do that, and it's something that I've done in my kingdom, is to actually be in touch. Have a kingdom server, Discord server, which I assume you do, most good kingdoms do. And try to get as many people to join the kingdom Discord for various reasons. You want to join the Discord because you want to stay informed at all times. You want to be in the voice chat during wartime so you can know what's going on and when it's going on. And uh, you just want to have a community that you can be in outside the game as well. And uh, some kingdoms, and my first kingdom done this, and I've done this personally, is to have town hall meetings. Now, this is like usually on the weekends when people are not working, is when you join and you have leadership talking about their plans, about the kingdom plans, when do they plan to register, answer any questions that people might have. And it's a great way to build trust and to connect with the people in your kingdom so they know who they're playing with and to build trust on which makes the kingdom more united and i remember i used to do these at like 2 a.m for me 3 a.m and there's no problem for me to do it because i did it to make the kingdom better i had a goal in mind and uh, it's very important to surround yourself in that leadership circle with the people who have the same mindsets so you don't want to always try to pull things and always try to have internal battles on where to do certain things and how to agree, where, where to push forward, where not to. So you want to have a nice circle of people who are aligned with the same goals in mind. And of course, when it's KVK time, leadership should be straight away, right after reset, right when you know who your kingdoms will be in your KVK to establish communication as early as possible because I'm a Euro player. Like when I wake up, I usually know who I'm fighting with, who's my ally, who's my enemy in the KVK. Because that's how things, how fast these things go. And if you're, if you're not fast, you might not get a favorable KVK, you might not get what you wanted. So it's very important for leadership to be congruent and you want it to be reliable in order for these things to actually happen as soon as they can. And now once you're in KVK, you got all this territory management you gotta you know plan which alliances get more crystals so they can build outside the starting zone things like that and the people who are gonna conquer these territories are the next component and those are the whale players like the carry players the people who are responsible for the kingdom success let's let's put it that way because essentially they are so these people are obviously usually max VIP, max commanders, equipment, of course, armaments. Everything has, you know, very good. So be, the reason why is because, hey, they can spend, they can do it. But also, they use everyone's troops in the kingdom. If your Wales garrison is bad and everyone dies, if his rally is not good and nothing gets done. So you need these people. And ideally you want to be spread out across various time zones. But this is a bit tricky to do. And in my experience, you don't want to have too many of them. Because you have too many of them, they usually have a bit of an ego. And things might get internally bad. Because their ego might have felt bruised. They're maybe not rallying or garrisoning as much as they used to or they expect to do. 
and that leaves some sour taste and builds resentment. And that's a slow poison for the kingdom, and that usually ends up being split. And things like civil war might happen too. Now, maybe I'm a bit exaggerating, but sometimes that's these sort of things happen. So you want them to be spread out. Ideally, they should be chill and understand that they're not always going to be the one rallying, the one garrisoning. There's going to be some rotations. That's maybe they're not as good as they would before. Like maybe someone got better armaments. Maybe someone got a city skin that's better. You know. So there's a lot of nuanced things when it comes to whale players, but you want them to keep them happy, but not become slaves to them. You know, you don't want to have just one whale get ranked one MGEs every time. Or you know, you gotta keep it balanced, so that's what signal readership goes into play. You got you have to keep these sort of players in line and that is sometimes a hard thing to do but it's a necessary thing to do and we come to the last component which is like the majority of players like regular players mid spenders low spenders free to play who actually make the whales work happen you can't trade well if the garrison is not full you can burn something if the rally is not full so it's very important to have full buildings, rallies, but also numbers on the field. Because numbers on the field has obviously lots of advantages, but also a lot of psychological advantages. Because if your enemy sees a lot of marches, then they might not feel confident. They might not try to contest you as much. And that in that in itself, half the battle is won by doing that. So do not underestimate the importance if you're a low spender, mid spender who think you're not doing anything. I think most people would feel like they're not contributing enough. But if you're someone who joins the rallies, the garrisons with their main, with their farm accounts, and you join them with the right troop type, and you have numbers on the field, you have adequate marches, like meta marches. Maybe you, don't, maybe you don't have five, but maybe you got three, maybe two. But don't try to underestimate yourself that much because you still matter. You're still gonna, you're still gonna contribute. Not as much as the whales, but you're still gonna contribute nonetheless. And you shouldn't really downplay your ability to impact something, especially in the lower, like bracket kingdoms, where more numbers matter. Like, the lower kingdoms, when someone goes offline, it usually is noticeable. And uh, every troop, every like open field marches matter. So these are the type of comments they usually get. Like they feel insignificant. They have no reason to play the game. And I partly understand that. I feel that myself sometimes. I'm not exempt from this. I don't consider myself. A great prayer. I don't. I don't consider myself a free to play god or something along the likes because I know there are players who are vastly better than me, and I'm aware of that. But also, I'm okay with that because compared to some other players, I really don't put in that much effort. Like for example, I really don't have farm accounts. I did not build that habit, and it's hurting me for my key, kill points. As you can see, my resources are 15 billion gathered in. How many days? 1861 days. That's five years, and I only get a 50 billion compared to some other players in the kingdom who get a, like triple and got triple more kills than me. And that is okay. I mean, it's not okay, but I realize where I've been wrong, and I don't consider myself. Someone who's a know-it-all, I know my flaws, and I know the reasoning why I don't have as many kill points. But then again, I try to keep an open mind, I try to keep learning. And if you're a free-to-play, if you're constantly complaining, you have, you're not giving yourself room to improve because you're wasting your energy crying and complaining every day. 
it's not productive for you for your kingdom and you just need to drop it i know it's not fair but who said it's supposed to be fair in a game like this where it's a lot of monetization involved who says you should have adequate level playing field if you're not spending a dime compared to the people who spend literally thousands hundreds of thousands to play the game so to me that's very much an entitlement to be to be competitive as the person who spends thousands i don't think that makes sense so to recap in order to have a successful kingdom you need a stern leadership that knows how to be tolerant but also ruthless when it comes to be you wanted to be in touch with their community by having kingdom discords by having communication having meetings just to build trust and to have good time with the players in the kingdom because if you're not having a good time then really it becomes like a work environment and why would you why would you use your leisure time to play a game to feel like work if you're not getting paid for it so always remember that this is at the end of the day a game and it should be fun but also not too fun that it becomes a burden for the people who actually want to win so there's a very distinct but also thin line between those two things second thing is you want the way of players you want the core group of players who are going to be the people who carry the kingdom so you want people who are responsible who are preferably spread out across various time zones and you want it to be to have the latest best thing all the good things armament city skins equipment commanders vip you know the drill and you want to have the people who actually fulfill these roles by joining rallies joining filling garrisons all very important things to do have numbers on the field open field numbers are very very important I don't really need to specify why but uh, yeah i think these are the basic three components and like i said it may sound obvious but i think it needed to be said i'm making this follow-up because the last two of my videos about this topic were successful and i see people re resonate with it and as someone who has been in various kingdoms and i've been a regular player i've been a in leadership i managed mges been in some territory one like a little bit of dabbling but i consider myself a bit multifaceted in that regard so i feel like i have uh, the confidence to really share these things and some of these things may have been a bit outdated it's been a while since i've been in leadership but the fundamentals are still there you want to have like i said in my videos you want to have a competitive group are aligned with the same interests interests and you want to reward the ones who are performing well and you want to filter out the ones who don't and replace them with the same minor players and uh, i think that's everyone's kingdoms who actually want to be competitive have that in mind and the more competitive kingdoms we have the better fights we have the more people will play the game and hopefully remain relevant for a long long time and uh, if you guys enjoyed the video if you guys enjoyed this miraculous heraclius chaining which has been so effective obviously then uh, drop a like subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in the next one